karon ng uh, malalaking kontrata pag nanalo yung kandidato na yun din ang mga nandyan behind this uh, candidate. Gusto po namin magkaroon ng uh, inclusive democracy. Kasama po yung mga tao sa pagpipili ng na mga nararapat na maging leader natin sa ating bansa. So, ginawa po namin to at eto po mga kandidato ng mga basi mo. Kasi po si Lenny Rubredo, ang uh, isa pong uh, naka Tunggali niya is si uh, Sosimo Paredes. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, while we were uh, in the process of voting, hindi po uh, inalaw ng Pomelec. So, pagkatapos po yung mga senators, there were 15 senators na si Northlist. At ang lumabas po doon, dapat walo lang. Kaya lang, nangyari ng, nagkaroon ng statistical tie, yung 9 and 10. So, sinama po namin. That's why we have 10 senatorial candidates. At kung tingnan nyo po, Napaka-balance eh. Meron po kami mga dating mga senador na mauusay naman ang performance. Meron po mga bago na pumapasok, dating mga congressman. In fact po, yung sa 15 na yung mauusay po lahat yun. No? Unfortunately, hindi po namin masuportahan lahat dahil yun po ang proseso na pinag-usapan namin. Na walo lang, kaya lang naging isa po. But anyway, ganun pa rin, yun ang proseso. So hopefully in the future, we can bring this down to the barangay level. Where residents of the barangay can be the ones to select sino magiging barangay captain, mga kagawad para ganon mula sa ilalim hanggang sa maging mayor, maging governor ay mahuhusay ang ating mga leader. Ito po ang nais namin mangyari sa ating bansa. So how strong is your group? How strong is our group? If you count all the members of the different organizations we're probably more than 1.5 million. Okay, nationwide. Now, our present uh, uh, situation is that we are bringing this down to all our members. Okay, so uh, that we still have to be worked on even uh, before the elections, so that everybody knows the list that we came up with, and hopefully they will support them and allow them to become leaders of our country. Sa so presidential post po, uh, wala kaming uh, ini-endorso. Basically, sinasabi lang po namin, doon sa mga kandidato for president, meron lang po dalawa ang pumasa sa Gabay Cristo. Ito po si Grace po at saka si Marrojas. Sinasabi po namin sa mga membro, mamili na lang kayo doon kung maaari. Ba't hindi po kayo sir mag-endorso ng presidential candidate? Dahil po hindi dumaan ng proseso ng people's primary. Ang nangyari po, nung ginagawa namin yung people's primary, May kaso pa si Grace po. Eh, dalawa lang po yung na-shortlist. So, anong uh, silbi pa ng uh, people's primary? Kung isa lang ang pinagpipilian, dapat may pagpipilian yung mga tao. Yun po ang proseso na gusto namin nangyari sa buong bayan natin. Sir, okay. so walang garanti yung 1.5 million na kumbaga kasi yung membership ni yung lahat ng buwan po. More or less, so, yes. So, wala pong guarantee na yung no, candidate? Wala, wala pong guarantee kasi hindi naman po kami nagbibigta. Sinasabi lang po namin, eto ang dumaan sa proseso, eto naman ay mahuhusay. Gamitin nyo din ang gabay Kristo sa pagpipili nyo. At tingnan nyo kung tugma yung pinili ng mga bumoto at yung sarili nyo pag-evaluate. Sir, yung gano'ng katagal yung proseso? Ilang buwan? Ah, kami 2015. When we started bringing in the different groups, pinag-usapan, pinag-usapan yung criteria, pinag-usapan kung paano gagawin, 2015 pa, start of 2015. Yes, the, primarily the faith-based group community. In fact, uh, the CBCP has endorsed the PMPL as an organization of faith-based organization. The process was done. Ngayon po, ito, People's Choice is the group that is pushing for this candidate that came out. Do you have any plans of bringing the guide outside of the faith-based groups? Because right now, it's all Christian-based groups. What about uh, other faiths? Is this something that you plan to well, also introduce to them? We are offering to the Filipino people. It is something which is a tool that they can use in order that they can select good leaders for our country. So it is open to everybody. 
although we call it the by Cristo, but it is open to everybody who believes in good governance, who believes in principled leadership. So during the people's primary, gano karami na participate ng mga uh, I, I do not have the exact numbers, no, but uh, siguro about uh, 23% of all those who registered okay, voted. Okay, kasi meron kaming, nagkaroon din kami ng registration, so to speak. Those who wanted to participate, we asked them to register. And based on that, 23% voted on uh, the... Gano karami siya yung registered? We registered namin. We had, uh, had about 23, 28? Uh, 30 plus. Ah, 30 plus? Oh, I'm sorry, I uh, do not remember the exact numbers, but more or less about 30,000 of uh, the members. Uh, Right. How, how many out of the 1.5 million in the joint communities, the members, are actually registered voters? Because that's the one oh, that will... Well, how many do you think? I'm sorry, I don't have the, the information for that. No? Uh, I would assume that as good Christians, they would also be good citizens, and therefore, they should have registered. And if they did not register this time, we will make sure that in the next election that we will also push for that. Sure, yung covenant po, uh, pa paano magiging dynamic yan if ever na manalo yung uh, in-endorso ninyong kandidato? So, okay. parang magiging uh, taga-sita ko ba kayo kapag na... na taga-suporta ko. Taga-suporta. No? In other words, uh, we will make sure that uh, this reform agenda will be endorsed or supported by them. And if bodies are needed, we will be there. Can you, can you expound a little bit on what the reform agenda consists of? Well, uh, the reform agenda consists primarily on one reduction of poverty. That is a major problem that we have. 50 million of our people are poor. And so that has to be addressed. If we do not address that, we might have civil uh, you know, a strike in our country. You know, when a hungry person uh, does not have food, he, will, he or she will do anything to get it. So we want that to be addressed. Now, together with that, we're also saying we need to create more jobs for uh, people so that uh, not only to provide for their needs, but also so that we can keep most of our people in our country. We have 12 million people, Filipinos, outside. And those, the families of those people suffer because of that. That too has to be addressed. Now there are also economic uh, considerations. So we're saying, consider, we are asking them to consider a change in the constitution wherein we can address some of the problems that need to be addressed. It doesn't have to be the whole constitution at one time. It can be done maybe in parts. So that that way we can address those problems at a time when it needs to be addressed and it does not look, take too long in order to for the change to happen. So those are part of the reform uh, agenda. We also have the issue on uh, uh, our foreign policy. You know, uh, we're saying let's have multilateral, not just one country, but also other countries who can support us in our present situation with China. We want that. It doesn't necessarily have to be only the U.S. We want. Just like what has happened, uh, Australia, New Zealand, other democratic countries, to help us in this particular situation. Is there anything in the reform agenda that addresses the corruption and lack oh, yes, of transparency? Oh yes, definitely. Good governance is uh, the other uh, major. Part of it also. Yes, and uh, we are against a political dynasty, uh, and we want that to be uh, passed as a law. We don't want uh, lip service on that. We want that to happen because a big uh, number of our uh, government, local government, is controlled by political uh, dynasties, and that is the cause of many of our problems in our country.